Greetings, bags of mostly water. Welcome to yet another OS Nerd video. In this video, open step for Mach 4.2, or to give it its alternate name, open step 4.2, or to give it its full name, open step for Mach 4.2 preview release 2. So OpenStep 4.2 was the last released by Next. It was released in September of 1997. It was actually supported by Apple for four to five years afterwards. Apple released uh, various patches, including a Y2K patch for OpenStep 4.2, as well as NextStep 3.3. Uh, OpenStep 4.2 is still available from Black Hole Inc., a URL for which will be provided in the description. Uh, this is is running on VMware and it's using a single core of an i7-6950X. It has 512 megabytes memory and it is using the VMware display driver, network driver, mouse driver and the Sound Blaster 16 sound driver. Um, now there are not many changes, actually there's only one change from a user standpoint between this and Next Step 3.3 so I'm not going to do my usual demo, no siree, because that would be boring. There would be one application to show you and then that's it because everything else looks the same and works the same as it does in Next Step 3.3. So instead I'm going to show you what my setup looks like. Now I've been using OpenStep 4.2 since early 98, late 97. I think I had it probably by November 1997. Um, I started off using it on a 200 megahertz P2 um, with 32 megabytes of memory. Then I moved it on to my P3 when I had it and then I migrated it to VMware shortly afterwards. Um, and it's been running in VMware ever since. Um, I do have a NetInfo master, which is Nova, which is sharing my user directories. That was hosted on an AMD K6 um, for about 10 years before I finally shut that box down last year and moved it to ESX. Um, so OpenStep does work inside ESX which is awesome. So, what's different? Well, let me show you the first application. Actually, let me just deal with this. Um, I use widescreen, which is a pager. Um, I don't use it for its pager because I find it sometimes crashes. Um, does it display postscript just goes weird for some inexplicable reason. But what I do use it for is align icons and then I will quit it and not look at it again. Um, I am tempted to write the icon alignment code into a modified version of Fiend so I do not have to run widescreen. Uh, don't get me wrong, right? widescreen is nice, it just occasionally crashes. Um, I just don't think PostScript um, gets along with it at all. Um, unfortunately. Um, so anyway, where was I? Oh yes, differences in applications. So normally I roll with browser view, but for the purposes of today's video I am going to use icon view. So let me go into next developer uh, apps and the only changed application is this. Um, so project builder. It's a continuation of the code that was in Mecca. So let me open up an application that I have. Uh, misc. And there we are. So this is a continuation of the code in Mecca. OpenStep 4.0 Retail added the debugger. So um, let's see. From the left, we have the build tool. So if I clean it. And I see what you're going to build as. So Intel, Next, and Spark. And then click on the hammer. Um, the output of make goes into the bottom half of the window. And any errors or other information um, go into the top half. And as we can see here, the build has completed fine. We have our finder that you can use to find and replace um, instances of text inside your project. Um, if you double click on one of the files in the browser here, it will open up in its own editor window. Um, if you have multiple editor windows open, if you click on this here, it will show you what you currently have loaded. Um, we have here the inspector that gives you various uh, attributes, um, file attributes, project attributes, 
build attributes, etc. And then we have the debugger tool. Uh, the de debugger tool, this is basically a front end um, around GDB, which is the GNU debugger. Uh, we can run it without debugging by clicking on that icon. And as you can see here, this just lets me size uh, text, edit the uh, angle of text and the XY coordinates. This is so that I could position text um, in a icon. Um, just by dragging the sliders around to get how I wanted, then I would copy the values from here into the source code. So let's stop it. You can either stop it via quit or press the stop button. Then we have the debugger, and this is like I say, it's GDB, um, so we can set uh, various options that we want uh, for the debugger. Um, then we can, um, oops, sorry, we can uh, we can uh, set. Uh, we can set breakpoints and look at the stack. Um, we can run. Up it pops, and we can pause. And then we can either step into code or step over code. Um, and we can do things such as print um, and inspect various things in memory. And let's just stop the debugger there. So that's pretty much uh, the only difference between Next Step 3.3 and OpenStep 4.2 is this one application. Although OpenStep does provide the next time application that was also in Mecca. It should be noted that if you have web objects installed, um, the last version of web objects from Next, uh, the first one to be branded by Apple, um, Project Builder is a bit different. If you go to Info and then Info Panel, it will be branded by Apple and it will be closer to the project builder that was in Rhapsody than the project builder that was in OpenStep in that you'd have a list of files by here and you'd have three columns for your browsing of classes etc. Um, you'd have a little addition of a couple of buttons here, one which lets you switch between the implementation class file and the interface header file and one that would open it in its own editor window. So that's pretty much it for Project Builder. And that's pretty much it for OpenStep 4.2. Um, really short video. No, I'm not going to leave it there because it is too short. Instead, what I'm going to do is show some of the modifications that I have. And the first one we're going to look at is The Fiend. <coughs> yes, that was one of the Easter eggs. So The Fiend, basically, if I just drag the dock out of the way, The Fiend provides an extension to the dock. Um, you can drag the icon anywhere on the screen that you want and you can lay out the icons any which way you want. I prefer them like this because I have a fully laden dock uh, with quick applications and then I just use the Fiend as a way of extending it. The Fiend has got layers so you can have many different layers with which to organize your shortcuts. You can either use this pull down to switch layers or you can use the buttons on the side to switch layers. The button in the middle lets you switch to the menu, and from the menu you can control the the dock settings, um, or the shelf settings, or your or you can have backspace loaded into the screensaver, and um, so forth and so forth. So I will show some of these applications because I do have a fair few. I'm not going to show them all because we'd be here for hours otherwise. Instead, I'm just going to show the main core. Um, I have a fair number. Oops, wrong one. So let's start off by looking at some of the Lighthouse Design applications. Let's start off with Concurrence, which is uh, Lighthouse Design's answer to Microsoft's PowerPoint. Now, Steve Jobs himself used Concurrence uh, for his Next World keynotes and he also used concurrence for his keynotes when he became ICEO of Apple. I believe he used this right up until keynotes became available on OS X. So let's have a look at some of the sample documents. So let's have a look at the OpenStep developer example. So this is your average slideshow. And if I click on play it then plays it and then you can change the slide by clicking the mouse button. And as you can see we have various uh, transition effects which all look very pretty and th that's it for that. So that's concurrence. Uh, next 
we have Diagram, which is Lighthouse Design's answer to, well, Visio, I suppose. So, for example, we can have palettes with various things which we can drag out um, onto our um, workbook, and then we can draw connecting things. Uh, connecting lines uh, between each thing and yeah so that's diagram it is fairly interesting in that it also allows you to hyperlink so if I go to the samples and I open the app kit diagram here we can see a layout of all the classes in Next Step 3's application kit and if this were a Next Step 3.3 box whenever I click on one of these little diamonds here it would load up the uh, the documentation for that class in an edit window but this is OpenStep 4.2 so none of these hyperlinks actually work and uh, let's also have a look at uh, this as well which shows the logic and data flow uh, of a custom application so this is click on the voice notes attached to various stages in the data flow for clearer explanations of those portions of the diagram yes thank you so this is actually quite nice so that's diagram. So let's see what else we have from um, uh, Lighthouse Design. Equation Builder, which basically lets you build an equation, and then you can then paste that equation into a word processor or what have you. Um, I don't know if I have any samples. Um, apparently I do. So, yep, there's that one. There's that one. There's that one. So that's Equation Builder. So let's see what other Lighthouse Design applications do we have. Okay, OpenWrite. There's actually two applications called OpenWrite for Next Step. The first one is by Lighthouse Design, which is the one I have here. And the other one is by Xanthus, which is part of their OpenOffice product, uh, which has no relation to OpenOffice um, that we know, which um, was derived from the Star Office source code. Although there is a kind of link between OpenWrite and OpenOffice. Um, it's a bit of a strange one that warrants its own video, which I might do at some point. Someone remind me if you're interested in, in knowing the history of Lighthouse Design, uh, Sun Microsystems, um, Java, and Star Office, and what became of Lighthouse Design. So anyway, this is uh, OpenWrite. Um, whoops. Um, and it, it is a fairly decent, I wonder if I have any samples for this actually. Um, be interesting to know if I do. Where are you? Open right. Uh, demos, yes I do. Because usually the demos, excuse me, I must be going crazy. Usually, oh yes, it's under the info panel. Uh, okay. So it allowed object linking with its OOE. It's, uh, um, open object embedding. So we can see here that this happens to be um, a TIFF image um, which was built using Equation Builder. Um, I don't actually know if we can open it with Equation Builder because um, it wants to say um, select image representation. Um, TIFF will do. But yeah, you could um, then go in and edit this um, with Equation Builder and save it and it would update inside the document. So this is kind of similar to OLE and DOLE, which uh, Next Step had at this point. Um, you could um, you could also create postscript effects with a postscript object, and it also had some other bits and pieces as well, which were nice. So that's open right. Uh, next we have Parasheet, and Parasheet is um, Lighthouse Design's answer to things like Microsoft Excel, um, uh, Lotus 1, 2, 3, etc. This is the basic, simple, two-dimensional spreadsheet. Um, now, let's see, I should have some samples for this. Apparently, oh, we said samples. Uh, so if I open up the income one, um, we can see here that um, it's your plain um, spreadsheet, and it does do uh, functions. And so I can, I can let's, let's uh, just paste this down. And we can go to sheet, fill, fill down. And this, and we can do, we can do uh, sh uh, fill, fill right, and then we can, we can take this and build a graph, and so forth and so forth. 
So that's Parachute. Uh, next we have uh, Quantrix, which is a bit hard to explain. But um, So essentially, uh, one of the killer applications on the Next was Lotus Improv. And um, when Steve did a keynote um, for the release of Next Step on Intel, he was talking about how quickly some of these companies were able to port their applications over from uh, M68K to Intel. And Improv was one of the applications demoed. Unfortunately, by then, Lotus had lost interest in Next Step, so they did the port only for that keynote. They didn't actually uh, uh, port it and then release it as a product. Um, so that meant that if you needed data modeling in Improv or anything similar, you were pretty much stuck with, with uh, M68K. And along come Lighthouse Design and Create Quantrix, which does the same thing as Improv. So, for example, if I go to Samples, um, they put the samples menu all over the place in each release, that's a bit annoying. And if I load up personal budget, I think that one will do... Um, no, let's load up one that's more complex. Let's load up the vendor analysis. So here we have two worksheets, one of a graph. So let's say we want to see vendor by year rather than measurement by year. Um, and let's have, not by vendor, but let's have that by year as well. Uh, we don't want vendor. Um, okay, let's see. Um, vendor by territory. And let's have the same thing here, uh, except vendor rather than measurement. Um, okay, let's let's go for territory and year. Let's go for the territory and measurement. So we can see that basically this is a data modeling tool. And a very interesting one at that. So that's it for Quantrix. Next we have Taskmaster, which is kind of similar to Microsoft Project. So again, if I open up a sample, and let's go for Build a Boat 2, and if I move that and increase the size of the window, here we can see that we have all the stages in the project, and we have the corresponding Gantt diagram for it. So this is very, very similar to project. Um, let's see what else. Okay, so Vario Builder and Vario Data. I will start with Vario Data first. This is kind of similar to the Microsoft Access Player in that you would give it a file to run. So if I go into Vario Data um, and into Examples and let's load the Bug Tracker. So this gives you a front end um, to a database um, that you can use um, to edit and view and, and what have you. But these front ends are actually created by Vario Builder, which was very, very similar to Interface Builder in that you had a bunch of palettes, attributes, inspectors, etc., and a window on which to drag things. So if I load up again one of the examples, the bug tracker, we can see here that you know you you pretty much done the layout. You you put the the fields that you want, and you set their um, their um, their formula or their access or their SQL or what have you. Um, you tell it basically which part of the database it comes from, and it will then, um, when it's played back, it will then do the resulting stuff for you. This is basically to save you the time and the effort of, of, of having to buy a um, commercial uh, SQL server such as Sybase or Oracle or what have you, and then have to either learn how to program or hire a consultant to come in and write a bespoke application for you. So this kind of filled the same niche that Microsoft Access and, and Access Player did. You build your application by dragging from the palette, save it, and then the other person loads it in Vadio Data and gets on with whatever it is they need to do. So next we have Wet Paint. which is uh, a fairly decent graphics editor. Um, it has filters and other bits and pieces, so it is it is um, it's probably not as good as Photoshop, but it's on a par with Photoshop at the time. So if I go in and I open, um, let's see, let's open uh, this document here. So you, you got your, you got your regular spray paint tools, so um, if I just resize this, and, if I wanted to spray paint the Apple logo, you know, I could just go in and, 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 and airbrush this out badly, very badly, so I don't get sued for copyright something or whatever. 
There we are. So there's the Apple logo completely gone. You could also do things like, you know, smudging or, or what have you. You could also, if you wanted to completely obliterate an image, like me, you don't know what you're doing, so I'd never read the manual on this. If you go to Tools and Filters, um, you've got some various filters that you can do and, and, and um, you can apply filters and, and, and what have you. And, and So yeah, that, that's wet paint. So that's it for the Lighthouse design applications. Let's have a look what other stuff we have on here. Um, well, okay, let's start off with Chronographer, which um, is a personal information manager of sorts. This is um, a calendar application, so you could you could do things like have a to-do list, and you could mark, put, mark down meetings, and, and create a schedule, etc. Um, I don't know how this works. I installed it, I looked at it, and I thought, this is interesting, maybe I'll use it. Um, but to be honest with you, um, I've never got around to it, um, but it looks interesting. Um, then we have uh, Cubex. So I was going to show you Cubex, but um, I have to actually reinstall it on this machine. So what I might do um, at the end of this video is switch to another host and show you Cubex on that host instead. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, so Frame Maker. This was considered yet another killer application. Uh, for the next back in the day. This is a fairly decent version of FrameMaker. It's version of 3.2. This is used by Eric Levinez for his Unix history timeline and programming language timeline. If you haven't seen those, they are fairly interesting if you're into that sort of thing. I will put links for them into the description below. Um, I have um, a file I worked on myself um, that shows the history um, and relationship between various Lisp machines. Um, this doesn't look too bad. If I save this as PostScript and then convert it to PDF, it looks even better. So I can kind of understand why Eric still uses it. Um, so yes. Okay, so AppSoft Image. This is another image manipulation tool. This one's actually kind of cool. So if I go in and open Stewie again, and what I will do is just move these out of the way, and you can do things um, that you would normally do, you know, such as airbrushing, again if I airbrush out the Apple logo, but you can also do things like go in and edit each individual channel. So if I apply the smudge tool um, to the mouth and nose in the red channel, um, and if I apply smudges to the eyes in the green channel, um, I think that'll do. And I apply smudges to the mouth and one of the eyes in the blue channel. And then go back to the RGBA channel. We can see here that the uh, um, the edits done to each color channel have a, have affected the overall image because you're editing um, each individual color channel. So this was a very cool application. Again, I haven't had time to learn how it works fully. Um, I've only recently been able to install this, um, but it certainly looks interesting for image manipulation. Okay, so knowledge tool is the next one. Again, I don't have a demonstration of this. Um, but this is used as, as uh, all kinds of thing. Uh, for the most part, it's used to design interactive courses. Um, you could then save those courses and people could look at them. I really don't think I have any demonstrations of this whatsoever. Um, I did have at one point, but now I don't. Okay, so no demonstrations and there's nothing... Um, nothing in here either, unfortunately. Oh well. But uh, yeah, it, it did look interesting, but again, I just haven't had the time to learn it. So Latin Bird I won't show, but Latin Bird basically lets you convert RTF to HTML. Um, I run a website which has complete next step documentation. Um, basically, I did it by using Latin Bird to convert the RTF into HTML. Um, I won't show these because they are fairly non interesting. CPU monitor just gives you a CPU monitor. Um, Omni image lets you view images. Omni PDF lets you view PDFs. Simple as that. Omni web I will show, however, um, as it's it's a fairly decent web browser. It doesn't do modern SSL. Uh, TLS 1.2 is completely lost on it, um, but it does enough for uh, um, basic browsing. 
So I can, I can go to my website, I can go to Next Computer's website and interact with the forums, etc. Um, but like I say, if I go to Wikipedia, um, if it tries to do any kind of redirection to HTTPS, unfortunately it just doesn't do it. And even if there was a plugin, um, there was actually a plugin for HTTPS, um, unfortunately it's completely the wrong version of SSL um, because of the various exploits in SSL 1, um, TLS 1, etc. Um, over the years. So that's OmniWeb. Pages, now this is interesting. Um, there, are, there were some rumors a while back that Pages was um, the basis for the application of the same name provided by Apple with iWorks. However, um, I don't no, I don't think so. There was um, an article written, uh, it was either for Byte or for Dr. Jobs Journal or something like that, by the CTO of Pages Software, and he said that the only thing that they really carried over was the name. Um, the source code for Pages was sold uh, to some firm in Chicago, um, and I really don't think that Apple got their hands on it and, and did anything with it. But Pages is a object-oriented word processor. Um, I think I might have got some samples for it here actually. Let me go have a look. Yes, I do. Um, let's have a look. I don't know, let's pick one at random. That one will do. So yeah, you can you can um you can select and um, objects and apply um various uh, properties. Um so yeah, it is, it is again I have no idea how to use this, but it is it is interesting. Um uh, maybe one day I will get around to learning how to use this and, and, and not bother with open office anymore. Um, so yeah, that's that for that. Okay, so what else do we have? Pencil me in. This is a personal information manager. So this gives you, again, uh, the to-do list and uh, various other things. Um, so it is kind of similar to um, to the other application I showed, which is Chronographer. Again, this is something which I, I keep on meaning to learn, um, but never get the time. So that's pencil me in. So radical news I can't show you because my ISP no longer carries a news server. So this is our browser, which is a graphical FTP client. Sbook is an address book. I don't have any addresses loaded. Again, it's one of those things I've been meaning to get around to do, but just never have the time. Uh, Stuart is a terminal. Um, it's much better than the terminal that you get as default with Next Step and Open Step. Um, so I, I use this constantly. This is probably my number one used application, with the second most used being Emacs. And what else do we have on here? Tiffany, which is yet another um, image editor. Now this one is quite complex, I, I never got around to learning how to use it, surprise, surprise. But if I go into pictures and I load Stewie again, we can see here that it's, it's got your usual thing, except this time you can, you can draw uh, uh, geometric shapes and fill things and, 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 and do things with things um, um, and um, other things. Um, which, whoa, that, wow, okay. Um, yeah, just clicking around on things, it's awesome. Oh, cool, excellent. So yeah, Tiffany is complex, and like I say, I never got around to learning how, how it works. Um, maybe someday. Toy Viewer is a nice application that, that lets you, conf um, well, it registers itself as a viewer, um, so you can use it to view most um, image formats that are currently available. Um, it will do image conversion, um, so it registers itself as the service and if you open anything um, such as a ping or a JPEG, um, it will load in Toy Viewer rather than Preview and then you could use Preview, um, so you could use Toy Viewer um, to do the conversion. So if I go back into Pictures um, and I find a ping, do I have a ping? Um, yeah, so if I go in here and, and this is the JPEG, 
and then I can go in here and I can save as a TIFF or what have you. So that's useful. So next we have Virtuoso, which was an interesting application. Um, so basically this is freehand. Um, this is freehand version 4, I think. Um, yeah, it was freehand version 4. Uh, so this could open f uh, freehand 4 and write freehand 4. Um, I think Altsys had sold this off to Aldus at some point and then Adobe uh, got their hands on Aldus and uh, got their hands on Freehand um, and it all got a bit complex thereafter but this is essentially Freehand and finally we have WordPerfect now this is your plain standard word processor um, I say plain standard, it, it was fully featured. Um, I don't know what the underlying version of the WordPerfect engine this used, um, but this was version 1.0.1. 1. Um, this essentially means this was, this was the first version of the next user interface for WordPerfect. Because um, WordPerfect 1 is a lot older than 1993. I think WordPerfect goes back to like 1979 or something like that. So this is probably going to be, let's see, 1993. This is probably going to be based on WordPerfect 5. Um, so it would be interesting to find out um, if this can support... Um, so I have WordPerfect 8 on my HP 712, um, which I'm going to demo at some point. Um, and I'm wondering if I save a file as WordPerfect 5, then I wonder if I could open it in WordPerfect on Next Step. And that's pretty much it for the applications. I have a whole bunch more. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is I am going to pause recording, and via the magic of editing, I will magically appear on another machine. So this is Oberon, which is another OpenStep 4.2 box, but I think while I'm here, I'm just going to take a visit into this directory and load this. And if I go in and open the example that I loaded earlier, which is this, we can see the Apple branded project builder that was provided as part of web objects. And if I go to classes and look at controller.m, we can see here that I have the ability to build from the directly from the editor without clicking on the build icon. I can switch between the header file and the class file. I can split it off into its own separate uh, panel and then close panel and then double click. And you can see I have the file list here. Um, we have pretty much the same thing, um, the build panel so I can clean, I can select which um, architecture. Even though PowerPC is listed as a build target, you can't build PowerPC binaries on OpenStep. So, nope, there's no um, assembler for the PowerPC, but that's okay. To be honest with you, I don't know if there ever were any plans to add a PowerPC assembler to OpenStep, given that Rhapsody was around the corner. Chances are this is probably just a Rhapsody code base, and someone accidentally left the PowerPC option. Um, you cannot generate PowerPC applications on OpenStep at all. So yeah, that's um, oops, didn't want to do that. That is Project Builder on OS 4.2 with web objects. And let's go back now to looking at Cubex. So I have compiled FEWM 1.25, I think it is, um, or 1.24. I'll soon tell you. Yep, 1.24. So this is a X Windows server. It provides support for X Windows Protocol 11, R5, and R6. Um, it has Motif. It has uh, XView. It has Athena. I don't think I have any major X applications on here. Um, I did have at some point, but not anymore. I don't have Mosaic on here unfortunately, um, but you have the usual things like Xterm, Xedit, um, um, Edit Res, 
We even have the open look tools like uh, shell tool, um, command tool, uh, text edit, which is a motif application in this case. Uh, there is an open look version of text edit, but I can't for the life of me uh, remember what it's called. Ah, uh, yes, it's XV text edit. So yeah, this is a fairly functional, and in fact, I could probably log on to one of my other Unix machines and run some X clients remotely. Um, so yeah, this is that's Cubex Windows. Uh, this is OpenStep 4.2 with web objects and via the magic of editing. This is OpenStep 4.2 without web objects. So that's pretty much it for this video. Um, there is more that I could show you, but we'd end up spending hours just looking at every single application ever made or that I have installed, and you would get bored. Uh, but at least I've shown you a good representation of the commercial software that was available for Next. So, thank you very much for watching. As usual, if you have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to leave them below. Like if you like, dislike if you don't, and feel free to subscribe at any point in time. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.